Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Inner Views, where we meet the people behind the businesses in South Africa. And today, I'm very excited to be chatting with Krupa. Krupa, please, will you tell us a little bit more about your business and why you started it? Hi, Melanie. Thank you so much for this opportunity for me to share my passion. I own a business called Color My Soul, where I teach dot art. And this is basically the creation of beautiful designs using only dots of different sizes and colors um, made out of paints and tools. So my dot art journey actually started about three years ago, completely by chance, when dot art appeared in my Facebook newsfeed. And I never heard about it before, but when I saw it, I thought this is so beautiful, I would like to learn more. Mm. So I started searching the internet and I found that there was such a huge international dot art community, yet I hadn't heard about it here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I continued searching and I was just blown away by the designs I was seeing and the diverse items that people were dotting on. So I then started researching on how this is done because these items were so beautiful. And although it was paint that was being used for the art form, the dots look like beads. Mm -hmm. All the while still trying to find uh, this art form in South Africa, trying to find somebody uh, who could teach it to me. So in my research, I ended up watching a whole load of videos, researching um, on the international groups. I started um, reading comments and grabbing nuggets of information where people would give advice on how to do things. Mm. I started mentally teaching myself how to do this. Finally, I met uh, through Facebook, a lovely lady by the name of Jeanette. Mm -hmm. I connected with her who was in South Africa. And as it turned out, she was hosting Dot Art workshops and uh, she lived just an hour away from me. So I went for a workshop. I absolutely loved it. And I continued doing it as a hobby. In the meantime, uh, fast forward a few months down the line, I was unhappy in my corporate job. Mm. Um, and um, the universe created circumstances basically that pushed me to make a decision and I resigned pretty spontaneously. So I, I actually didn't know at that point what I was gonna be doing with my, with my time. Mm. All I knew was I love dotting. I felt so relaxed. I felt so happy as I was dotting. And I thought to myself, I remember thinking as I used to dot, I wish everybody could feel this joy. So once I resigned from my job, people had seen friends that I was doing a little uh, dotting project and they wanted to know, how do you do this? So I thought, let me schedule a workshop um, just to teach a few people how to do this. And the rest of the time, I actually thought I would be going to markets all I wanted to do was dot. So I thought I would be going to craft markets and selling my items. I even started looking for gazebos and trolleys to carry all of my things. But I did the first workshop. It was fully booked. And I had to actually um, stop the bookings for a limited amount of people and then schedule a workshop for the week after. And it continued for the week after and the week after. And through word of mouth, I've just continued doing workshops, actually. So two and a half years later, I'm still doing workshops and sharing the joy of dot art. That's such an amazing story. <laughs> so, so what were you doing in the corporate space? So I initially studied travel. I was working in the travel industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually, looking back at my jobs, I was never, ever fulfilled mm -hmm. in the corporate well, then I always knew that I didn't belong there. I always knew that I wanted to do something creative, but I didn't know what that was. So I was in trouble initially, and thereafter, I ended up in the medical diagnostics industry. Wow. Which was supposed to have been temporary, but it turned into 10 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's, really yeah. not, that's really not a creative industry, is it? Not at all. But in the middle of all of that, I discovered face painting. Okay. I started doing face painting for family and birthday parties and I absolutely loved it. The time would just fly by and I would just be having the best fun. And eventually 
I started getting uh, strangers asking me what I do bookings for their kids' parties. And that's what I started doing. And I just, that was my first experience of doing something that you love. Yes. And, you know, the time just flies by you and you can't believe that you actually get paid for it. Yes. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, I was in travel followed by medical and in between trying a few creative things. I love that story. That's wonderful. <laughs> and, and what have you found most tricky about the transition from corporate to being self-employed? I think um, there's so many changes. I mean, first of all, it, it's a completely different mindset change mm. from working in, in corporate to suddenly owning a business and having complete freedom. Um, you know, it's deciding to use your time wisely. You need to, have, you actually do need to have some goals. So although I didn't, um, although I didn't have an exact plan of what I was going to do, I did think that I wanted to go and sell in markets. But it's important to be flexible because if you, uh, you it's important to be flexible so that you can go with the flow and with whatever, whatever, with whatever else comes along. Mm. I love that you had one idea for what you were going to do. And then in the end, you followed the market need instead. Um, yes. A, lo a lot of uh, self-employed people don't do that. So that's, a, that's a, a great wisdom to have had all along. Yeah, and I think um, you're right. You need to actually find a need. You need to see wh what do people want. And especially in this case, I think we live in such a fast-paced world. And it's so stressful that people are looking for something to relax. Mm -hmm. So dot art is an art form that is for anybody. Have to be creative you don't have to have an artistic bone in your body or anybody the technique is not difficult it just requires a lot of practice okay okay now i see dot art all over the place these days but again like you mentioned prior to about three years ago i'd never heard of it is it an is it an old craft that has been revived or is it something quite new so the origins of dot art, because this is something that I researched when I started as well. When I started off, I was just like a sponge taking everything in that I could find out about dot art and its origins and where it came from. And it's actually from the, uh, the Aboriginal people of Australia. And what I read is that um, they would um, basically have uh, secret symbols that was not meant to be shared with anybody outside or anybody that was not initiated into their tribe. And they would use dots to cover up these, um, to cover up these symbols. So that's the origins, but I think we've modernized it to now start using stencils and making designs that are symmetrical and uh, we've, we've, we've changed it and it's evolved a lot. And, and what kind of things do you do dot art on? So one of the things I always say, everybody knows me for saying this, is if it doesn't move, you can... <laughs> <laughs> so I would actually like to show you a few examples that I have here. Okay, I'd I think to see them. That is what makes dot art so much of fun and that you don't get tired of it because, first of all, the design options are endless and the items that you can dot on are endless as well. So if I show you here, for example, um, these are fridge magnets. Those are stunning. Thank you. And then um, this is a stone. Um, this is a tea light holder. Oh, those are delicious. Thank you. And then these are just canvases. Wow. Flat surfaces as well. So something like that. This is actually a design that I created for an article in Creative Hobbies magazine. Okay. Yeah. And um, one last thing I want to show you here. That's a fantastic it's... publication, Creative Hobbies. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I don't have that many samples here because usually whatever I make either ends up going to somebody as a gift. Okay. Um, an item for somebody to, uh, you know, who that somebody has placed an order. But if it doesn't move, you can probably dot it. So that means you can dot on stones canvas, cell phone covers, laptop covers, you can dot on pot plants, ceramics. I've had my workshop attendees 
they are, they, you know, when I say, if it doesn't move, you can probably dot it. They literally go and find things to dot. Cause once you know this art form, everything becomes a canvas. So they sent me pictures of them dotting on so many different things like um, Lazy Susans. My one workshop attendee, Sandra, she has these concrete slabs leading up to a swimming pool. Yeah. She dotted those. Oh, wow, it's that sounds fantastic. And it I'm just so looking at a lamp on my desk now with, a, a, with new eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, once you know dot art, life will never be the same. You know, <laughs> everything around you. <laughs> oh my goodness, you've already affected me and we've only been chatting for 15 minutes. <laughs> so, um, what sort of you must try sometime. Absolutely. What sort of paint and tools do you use? So paints, we use acrylic paints. Acrylic paints work on most uh, surfaces. Then there's also fabric paints. And if you would like to dot on something like ceramics, then there's a special paint for ceramics where you need to bake the item in the oven. Okay. In terms of tools, you do get dotting tools that can be used, but honestly, anything that you dip into paint and it makes a dot can be used as a tool. Wow. So, give you, so to give you an example of some household items, the back of a pencil, yes. a toothpick, wow. the back of a pencil, in fact, when I started, um, the first items that I used were drill bits. Okay. That was uh, the first tools that I ever used for my dotting. Was that because that's what you had? That's because uh, somebody actually gifted it to me. Okay. My sister saw how much I was loving this art form and she decided to buy me a whole range of drill bits from the smallest size to the biggest size. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. And then there's, the, the tools do different techniques as well. So, you know, we've got tools that do dots of the same size and then we do tools that do um, techniques like, like that. And where dots go from big to small. It's a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. I'm dying to try it. What I love about the story is that it sounds as though uh, if you could use anything that makes a dot and it's just acrylic paint, um, it's a craft that's accessible to people, you know, no matter what your budget is. Yes, yes. And especially, you know, you use household items, it doesn't take up a lot of space. And once you have some tools and a few paints, any, any item that you want to dot can be dotted. So messy you can if you go on holiday you can carry it around with you if you're in your home you, know, you can either pack it away or leave it in a little corner it doesn't take up a lot of space mm, mm. that's actually a great uh, advantage um, I know with a lot of crafts that you you know if you can't move them around I, I like to be able to pack it up in a little bag and take it with me when I when I go away somewhere so that's awesome yes. and who are your customers mostly who who are the kind of people who come to your workshops so it's mainly ladies as it goes with arts and crafts, but I've had many men coming to my workshops either because the girlfriend or wife brought them along as an activity to do together, or perhaps it was a, a, a corporate function or a retreat. And the men are pleasantly surprised at how much they enjoy the dotting. So it really is for everybody. In my workshops, the um, I usually do ask that, um, the age be nine years or above, just simply for, you know, grasping the technique. Although I have to say I have worked with, you know, younger ages where they do perfectly fine as well, but um, generally nine years and older. And my eldest workshop attendee has been 86 years old. Wow. And uh, it's, it, it was just amazing to see how much she enjoyed it. And she was just filled with joy as she was darting. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, how did COVID-19 affect your workshops? So when COVID, when we went into lockdown, to be honest with you, initially I was so relieved at the chance to be able to stop because since the beginning of this journey, I started this in July, 2018. Since the beginning of the journey, it's just, uh, I've been doing workshops and I've just been enjoying the ride. And, you know, there hasn't been a chance to stop because there's just been workshops. And because dot art was so new, everybody wants to learn the art form. So 
when COVID hit, um, initially I was just relieved to have a bit of a break. Um, and then obviously as it got extended and went on for longer, I decided, okay, now I need to, um, now I need to do something uh, because I obviously couldn't do workshops in person anymore. So I sat down with my business coach and uh, we decided it's time now that we create an online course. And this was something in the pipeline since the year before already. And I just never got a chance to do it. So I created an online course and uh, that's now available worldwide. So I'm able to reach more people than previously. That's amazing. And where are you hosting your online course? What platform are you using? I'm using a platform called Teachable. Mm -hmm. It's very user friendly. Uh, even my students have said it's such a it's such a lovely uh, platform. It's so easy to use. And the, the course is broken down into bite sized pieces. Mm -hmm. So there's videos, there's text, there's pictures, and you work through it as you have time, you start whenever you have time. So there are no deadlines. You don't need to do anything by a certain time. Mm -hmm. And we've also got a private Facebook group. And that's my way of supporting the students where I ask them to post their practice sheets because during the, during the workshop, there's some practice that they need to do. Mm -hmm. So I've got the private Facebook group, which uh, is fantastic because you can give feedback and assist people without actually being there in person with them. Mm -hmm. That's so wonderful. And, and if your online course takes off in a really big way, will you still go back to teaching workshops uh, when lockdown lifts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love the interaction with people. I miss the interaction with people. And it is just priceless seeing the joy on someone's face mm. as they create their artwork and as they, you know, I hold it up for them and they see what they've created. Mm. I love interaction with people. I love sharing the skill with people. So I will definitely be going back to do workshops. In total thus far, over the two years that I've been hosting workshops, I've had, um, we've had just almost 2,200 people that we've trained in person. Wow. And uh, on the online course as well, we've got almost 200 people. So I would just like to continue sharing the joy of dot art and reaching more people. That's so wonderful. So, um, moving, moving into the online space, um, a lot of people have uh, had to do that now in their businesses. Uh, what do you think is next for you from here? An, an online store or are you just going to stabilize actually, the business for a while around what you've got? So, I actually do have an online shop already. Oh, okay. Okay. I do have an online shop already where you can purchase dot art supplies. You can purchase items to dot on. Um, there's step-by-step -step instructions as well. So for people who wish not to purchase the online course itself, our step-by-step -step instructions are very detailed as well. Okay. There's, a section, there's a section on tips and advice that tells you how to use the tools. And I've had many people giving me wonderful feedback on uh, and sending me pictures of the first time artwork that they've done from the step-by-step -step design. So going forward, I've actually got some, um, an exciting pr product launch coming up. Okay. <laughs> it's very close to launching. I actually am barely able to keep it under wraps anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with Christmas coming up, you know, with Christmas coming up, I'm uh, working on a few things for Christmas. And in the meantime, you know, I have a, at, at the beginning of the year, I created a, I always have a, vision board and a list of goals. Mm -hmm. So for the moment, I'm just, you know, checking that regularly to see that I'm uh, accomplishing my goals and on track. Mm -hmm. Now you've also mentioned that you have a business coach. Um, mm -hmm. has, how has that process helped you as an entrepreneur? Having, an, having a business coach is, I think it's important and it's, necessary for everybody going into business. Coming from a corporate background, I knew absolutely nothing about business. Mm -hmm. So having somebody there for accountability, having somebody there to brainstorm with and run ideas by, mm -hmm. and you know, guiding you all the time, helping you with pricing and budgets and giving you advice so that you don't make uh, mistakes that other people make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I 
I, I really recommend having a business coach. I'm also a big believer in the coaching process. So what have been your biggest challenges about running your own business? There's been a few, although I've got to say that a lot of them are not necessarily challenges because I always just see them as an opportunity to grow. Mm-hmm. But right now, for example, and as the, the business is growing and as my Facebook page is growing as well, because at the moment we've got over 8,000 people on the page, managing social media mm-hmm. is one of the things that's quite a challenge because that alone is a full-time job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Responding to messages and WhatsApps and then there's obviously wearing multiple hats. I mean, having to do everything yourself, admin, uh, stock management, uh, mm-hmm. processing orders. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think the biggest challenge is just wearing those multiple hats and trying to juggle and keep up with everything. Mm-hmm. And understanding what you should be focusing on, hey? Exactly, exactly. And trying not to drop the ball. I mean, you just, uh, you know, um, so that's why I always have to-do lists. I always um, try and create a to-do list so that my day has some structure and, you know, an action plan for the day. And it's such a, it's such a, it's such a good feeling of accomplishment when you can scratch that item off the to-do list. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, so that's one of the things that has, that has really helped. And then I check in with my business coach regularly. So, you know, he as well, in terms of the accountability is checking that I'm doing what I need to do as well. Yes. 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 They are great for accountability. And what do you enjoy most about being self-employed? Oh, there's so many things. I think, I think what I love most is the freedom to decide every single day, how I would like to spend my day. That is probably, that, that is, it's, it's, it's such an amazing feeling to know that if I, if I feel like um, taking it easy in the morning, because I'm actually a night owl, mm-hmm. so I work better into the night. So having the freedom to decide every single day what I want to do, not having to sit in traffic, yes. being able to dress casually, not having to ask anybody if I would like to go and leave. (laughs) (laughs) I love all those things about being self-employed. I think being self-employed is a really exciting journey on its own. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, Krupa, your enthusiasm for what you do is totally contagious. Um, You sound like you're a natural entrepreneur and um, I've really enjoyed chatting with you today. If anybody would like to reach you online, how can they find you? So my website is www.colormysoul.com. That is my online shop as well. So if you need any dot art supplies, we courier nationwide and soon we'll be couriering internationally as well. Um, And then my Facebook page is Color My Soul. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. It was really, really inspiring chatting with you. Thank you for the opportunity.